my brothers and sisters today some of you must have come here you know maybe there's a problem in your life maybe you are going through difficulties maybe a marital discord or maybe a relationship with your family members or maybe you are having a job related problem or maybe a financial related problem or some domestic problem or some health related issues there are many things in our lives isn't it my brothers and sisters you must have come here you know one thing we have to understand my brothers and sisters we have come to the right place praise the lord <laughs> hallelujah you know why i tell you last week one young f- person came here yesterday he called me he said brother i i was 6 months you know last 6 months i'm going through tremendous problems you know i'm i was very much away from the lord i was in sin you know but last week i came to the divine mercy prayer gathering and i felt a lot of joy and a new hope came to me and now i'm going to come to these prayers and literally the things have started changing in my life hallelujah shall we give a big hand to this lord hallelujah <laughs> who brought the changes in that young man's life my brothers and sisters is none other than jesus john 637 jesus said let's look into the scripture my brothers and sisters all those the father gives me will come to me and whoever comes to me read it i will never drive away you know whoever comes to jesus he will never drive away hallelujah my brothers and sisters what a powerful promise for you isn't it yes so today you are come at the feet of jesus jesus is promising you my child you are come at my feet i will never reject you i will never drive you away i will never forsake you praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah my brothers and sisters that's why it's very important you know to have that hope you will get a new hope you know and let's get into acts chapter 14 verses 8 to 10 in listra there sat a man who was lame he had been that way from birth and had never walked he listened to paul as he was speaking paul looked directly at him so that he had faith to be healed and called out stand up on your feet at that the man jumped up and began to walk my brothers and sisters how did that faith come to that young man the man was crippled from birth how did it the faith came how hearing the word of god hearing the word of god the faith came my brothers and sisters as you are listening to the word of god right now you are getting the faith hallelujah hallelujah you are seeing the testimonies you are hearing the power of god i'm sharing with you so many things your faith is what's happening increasing praise the lord hallelujah so my brothers and sisters and then paul commanded he saw that young man was getting the enough faith now to be healed he said in the name of jesus christ of nazareth get up and walk and he walked my brothers and sisters that's the power of god hallelujah hallelujah my brothers and sisters that's why remember it's very important my brothers and sisters roman 10:17 says how the faith comes consequently faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word about christ praise the lord the faith comes by hearing the message hearing the word of god the faith is increasing in you faith is building up in you hallelujah hallelujah my brothers and sisters i want to give you one testimony of a one of our brothers called francis you know what happened to him you know one of the one brother from our prayer gathering his name is scotty 
He's a, uh, he's from Texas in the United States. He was a regular member today. He did not come. Maybe he's gone on vacation. My brothers and sisters, one day, Brother Scotty shared one testimony. You know, he was completely had come to Jesus in the divine mercy prayer. He was so far away from Jesus. He said, all the Ten Commandments are broken. <laughs> he used to tell us, you know, that much of sin I committed, all Ten Commandments are broken. You know, he came to Jesus in a powerful way. My brother and sister, he started reading the word of God. And one day, he was having a problem with the eyesight of growing dim. And he believed in the power of God. He was listening to the word of God and the reading the word of God, my brothers and sisters. And uh, it brought so much faith in him. One day, he threw his glasses and threw away. My brothers and sisters, brother Scott, he was completely healed. And he can even read a small letters today without glasses. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, our brother Francis, what happened to him? Brother Francis heard this beautiful testimony of Brother Scotty shared here. So one day, Brother Francis, he had also now developed enough faith. Reading the word of God, he's a regular member of here. Coming to the Divine Mercy Prayer Gathering, his glasses, he was wearing 17 years glasses. Now the double images started coming to him while reading. So he was so frustrated about it. One day decided, I will believe and trust my Jesus. I'll throw this my glasses. I'm seeing double, double images. My brothers and sisters, he threw in the dustbin, you know, and somewhere, you know, very secret place because he didn't want somebody else to remove it and watch, <laughs> put it across. <laughs> so, my brothers and sisters, what happened? Our brother Francis was completely healed. He was wearing glasses for 17 years. No more glasses. Now he can read the pocket Bible. You know the small pocket Bible? He can read it, my brother and sister. Brother Francis, can you stand up and turn around and show to the people, this is a man who got no glasses, nothing. He can see perfectly, my brothers and sisters, because of the great faith in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, see. Now, because I gave the testimony, please don't throw your glasses in the dustbin now. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then, uh, then everybody said, Brother Alfred doesn't have face. See, he's wearing glasses and coming. <laughs> my brothers and sisters, yeah. You know, so that is why my brothers and sisters, here, let's get into Matthew chapter 8, 23 to 27. Then he got into the boat and the disciple followed him. Suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciple went and woke him up and saying, Lord, save us. We are going to drown. He replied. He replied. You know, my brothers and sisters. Okay, we are going to drown. My brothers and sisters, look into this. You know, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up rebuked the wind and the waves and it was completely calm. Hallelujah. You know, my brothers and sisters, Jesus was in the boat during the storm. Isn't it? Hallelujah. But what happened to the disciples? They did not have enough faith. You know, they thought they were going to drown in the storm. They woke him up, Master, Master, wake up. Don't you care for us that we are drowning? Jesus woke up, you of little faith, my brothers and sisters. You know, and he rebuked the wind, storm stopped, and everything was calm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, in the same way, in our lives also, our storms will come. You know, and Jesus is in our boat also. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have to have that faith, my brothers and sisters. If we don't have that faith, what will happen? You know, we go to the extremes sometime. In India, my brothers and sisters, in the year, you know, 2022, 11,290 farmers and laborers together, farming laborers, they committed suicide and died. Do you know the reason? 
they had taken the loan to cultivate the crop. You know, my brother and sister from the private landlords and banks. And uh, they couldn't repay because the rain did not properly come and the crop was a failure. And these people, because of the pressure from the landlords and the banks, getting behind them and interest was increasing, they thought the best way is to commit suicide. 11,290 farmers committed suicide and died. Terrible, isn't it, my brothers and sisters? You know, what I'm trying to drive at, my brothers and sisters, people go to the extreme when the storm hits their life. But if you have Jesus in your life, you will never commit suicide. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus will be with you. You know, my, in your boat, my brothers and sisters, and he will take you to the shore. He will take you to the shore. You have to have that faith, my brothers and sisters. My Jesus is capable of taking me to the shore. You know, you should not lose your heart. Come to Jesus. Don't run away from Jesus. That's the mistake many people do. Whenever they encounter a problem, they think Jesus cannot solve. I'll run away. Just like Jonah. And Jonah landed in the belly of the whale. Hallelujah. My brother and sister, you also want to land up there? <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> my brothers and sisters. You know, so what I'm trying to drive my brothers and sisters, you have to understand our Jesus will be with you in your boat. Shall we give a big hand to Jesus? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. There was a young girl. Shall we put the photo of uh, Wilma? Her name is Wilma. Okay, my brothers and sisters. Yeah, Wilma, okay. This is the young girl. She's working for, as a nurse for the Tumbe Hospital, you know, in Ajman. You know, what happened to her? Recently, uh, in the month of July, on July 22nd, my brothers and sisters, she suddenly started becoming unstable. She couldn't get up from the bed. She was getting a dizziness. She cannot get up. She cannot put one step also. And even if she had to go to the toilet, people have to help her. She became such a critical state in her life. Young girl, active girl. And now this state. My brothers and sisters, she felt helpless. That's the time my brothers and sisters, one of our brother called Peter, he invited her to come to this healing session here. How she can come? She cannot get up from the bed. My brothers and sisters, and she told, I cannot get up from the bed. Please pray for me in the healing session. And this brother Peter, in the last healing session in July, he started praying and interceding for her. Suddenly got a call. You know, and he didn't want to live during the session. And what happened? When he went home, he called her. That time she said, Peter, you know, when you must have been praying in the presence of the blessed sacrament in the healing session, I suddenly felt something coming to my, over my body. And I am feeling much better now. And she started feeling better. Next day, Peter called me and told me, Brother, can you call Wilma and pray over her? And he gave me this testimony. I said, okay, fine. And I prayed, I called her. And I prayed on, over the phone, my brother and sister, for a complete healing. And remember, Wilma is 100% healed and she came to the church on her own before she went on vacation. Shall we give a big hand to the Lord? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, it is the Jesus who healed her. All the medication she tried, nothing worked. But only Jesus healed her. So my brothers and sisters, we have a living God. We have to understand, my brothers and sisters, that is why, you know, you need to trust in the power of the living God. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, you know, whenever you encounter a problem, don't run away from Jesus. Come to Jesus. You know, one of our brothers, my brothers and sisters, you know, here, went through a financial problem in his company. You know, so, this was a critical problem because he was in a high post in the company. 
and some misappropriation of funds took place. You know, so the, one of the blame came upon this brother. So what happened? So it was a critical state and the, they complained in the court. You know, the matter went to the justice system here. My brothers and sisters, you know, that's the time. This is a non-Christian family, my brothers and sisters. And one of our prayer gathering knew him, working with them. He said, brother, why don't you come to divine mercy? My brothers and sisters, they came to divine mercy with such great faith, this Hindu family. And they won the first case. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, the again second case very soon this month. And they trust in the power of Jesus. You know, you know, and they have understood. They're reading the scriptures. They did not know about Jesus, but today they know Jesus. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, I don't want to show them who are there. They are right here. But my don't, don't look this side, that side. You do not recognize. <laughs> my brother, but I have to give the powerful testimony very soon. So that's why I'm hiding from you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Their identity. Okay. My brothers and sisters, and they have a full firm faith in the power of Jesus. This Hindu family has that faith, my brothers and sisters. They have developed that faith coming here. You know, that's why we have to understand, my brothers and sisters, if the non-Christian family, you know, who do not know Jesus, can come to Jesus and can be blessed. Why not me and you? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall we give a big hand to Jesus? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, Jeremiah 32, 27 says, let's go into that, my brothers and sisters. I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? Is there anything impossible for me? The Lord is asking us. Is it? Is it anything impossible for God? Hallelujah. And now again in the scripture, Isaiah 43, 10 to 11. Let's get into that. Why nothing is it? You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, no God was formed. Nor will there be one after me. I even I, I am the Lord and apart from me there say that there is no savior. So there's only one living God. What is his name? Shall we shout loud? Jesus. Shall we shout loud? Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters we have the living God. You know my brother nothing is impossible for me. My, again Matthew 19 26 says Let's get into that, my brothers and sisters. Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Hallelujah. With God, all things are possible. Believe, my brothers and sisters. Believe it. All things are possible with Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, that's what I'm trying to tell today, my brothers and sisters. You know, I want to show you a beautiful testimony. On the screen, if you don't understand, I'll explain to you. Okay, let's watch it. Stop right now because this video will be the most powerful video you have seen all day. This boy's name was John and he was out on the ice with his friends one day when suddenly the ice broke and John fell through the ice trapped underneath for 15 minutes until the paramedics could get there. They finally got to him rushed him to the hospital, but by then John was clinically dead. He had been without a pulse for 27 minutes. Then John's precious grandmother arrived at the hospital and began to pray for him in the name of Jesus. But that's not even the crazy part of the story. The nurses were amazed because after 27 minutes, John's heartbeat returned unto him and he survived because God intervened. This happened because we serve a God of the miraculous. And if you want to experience the power of God, Hallelujah. See, my brother said that there was a young man. John was playing in the, you know, ice. Ice skating or whatever. Suddenly this ice broke and he went inside that ice. 
can you imagine in the full ic was buried and the police came and these people came rushing and then by the time 15 minutes had passed can you believe inside the ice you can that kind of ice completely buried nose breathing and completely and after that the, they rushed that took a 27 minutes that young man was out of breath there were no pulse nothing literally he was dead you know my brother and sister what happened that in that lifeless state he was taken to the hospital my brother and sisters his grandmother came a very powerful lady in prayer and trusting in jesus she came to him and he started lifting a prayer to jesus asking a grandson to be healed you know my brother and sister what happened the boy opened his eyes can you believe his pulse started his heartbeat started everything started and the nurses everyone were doctors were shocked because they have never seen a miracle like this 27 minutes this boy was without breath my brother how can he come that breath can come it's only jesus gave him the life my brother and sister shall we give a big hand to the lord hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah my brother and sister see the power of jesus my brother and to the raise this young man up dead boy you see miracles and miracles my brother and sisters you know that's why we need to glorify god we need to praise god we need to honor god my brother and sister you know recently you all know in paris there was olympics right and what happened you all know yes you know there was absolute blasphemy for jesus You know my brother and sister our last supper was done in that opening ceremony who did it who did it all homosexuals they did the last supper to blasphemy jesus my brother and sisters you know but something beautiful happened afterwards my brother and sister can we watch the video i will show you you saw thousands and thousands of christians had come together in paris and worshiping and praising god and giving the reverence to mother mary shall we give a big hand to jesus hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah you see my brother and sister that is what i'm going to tell you you know when you glorify god when you honor god my brother there's a blessing upon you blessing upon your home blessing upon your city blessing upon your nation my brothers and sisters you know that's why you have to understand and let's get into this my brothers and sisters zam 910 zam 9 that those who know your name trust in your lord for you lord have never forsaken those who seek you hallelujah if you were seeking god with your whole your heart god will never forsake you praise the lord hallelujah you see my brother and sister i want to give you a beautiful testimony of one of our prayer gathering members you know called roshan and his wife jashal they were without children for you know for some time and in the meantime jashal had a miscarriage nearly four times and my brother and sister they were very active members of our team and the, they were doing a marvelous work in our ministry my brother and sister even and the family fed my brother and sister roshan is to do wonderful work and uh, you know his wife also fully involved with us and after that uh, she became pregnant after the in december month and what happened on july a third you know she delivered a cesarean baby you know the baby had to be then the cesarean section and they removed the baby you know but my brother before that she started some complications started coming and after that the complications started becoming more you know and she started getting a stomach a kind of a infections and the doctor said then the stomach infection to chest infection and she started getting a breathing problem now doctors put the ventilator to her for breathing purpose she become situation become critical my brothers and sisters but this family 
you know, incessantly praying the Divine Mercy Chapter Rosary, and they have a lot of devotion to Mother Mary. Perpetual sucker. They are doing the novenas and prayers and going on. Family members all gathered together. My brothers and sisters, suddenly, even though Jeshel and their doctors had put the ventilator, you know, and she's on an, all the cover was there, you know, uh, this thing for a breathing purpose, the mask was completely put and covered the face, she started getting a jasmine smell. Hallelujah. What does it indicate? Jasmine flower smell. Not the perfume, okay? <laughs> yeah, it is the Mother Mary's presence. And she felt something, somebody touched her. And suddenly that, uh, you know, ventilator that put the pipes, the pipes came out automatically. My brothers and sisters, and they knew something has happened here. Hallelujah. You know, my brothers, it's an indication that Mother Mary has come, you know, and bringing a healing to her. My brothers and sisters, you won't believe it. Next day, the doctors found Jashal has tremendously improved. And within a two days, they discharge her completely. I want to show you now, my brothers and sisters, a wonderful baby here. Jashal is here. And uh, Roshan, can we show a next photograph, please? This is Roshan. And he's there behind. Can you, Roshan, can you stand up and glorify God? This is uh, Roshan here. He's in the last. Shall we give a big hand to the Lord? Hallelujah. This is the family, my brothers and sisters. His wife is still in India. She'll be coming soon to join him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a beautiful baby, my brothers and sisters. They have got now. You know, they are very happy. Psalm 37, 3 to 5 says, listen to this, my brothers and sisters. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you what? The desires of your heart. Take delight in the Lord. You know, and he will give you the desires of your heart. That's the word. My brothers and sisters, don't run away from Jesus, but take delight in him. Whenever you have a storm, come close to him. Take delight in him. Pray to him. Spend time with him. And my brothers and sisters, then commit your way to the Lord. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him. And he will do this hallelujah what will you do he will fulfill all your heart desires praise the lord hallelujah 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 again our brother francis said another he gave me four testimonies but i do not have brother francis four testimonies time okay so i'm giving you one more testimony of yours you know brother francis one day you know we had a uh, record breaking uh, you know, rain in the month of April. You remember that? All are laughing. Once upon a time when it says rain, all is to be happy in the bah. You see my brothers and sisters? And now when I say rain, you know, <laughs> everybody's face is like this. Especially in Sharjah, no? <laughs> okay. You see my brothers and sisters? You know, in the month of April, there was too much rain. And that's the time this brother Francis you know, he lost his job also. And unfortunately, while climbing some stairs, you know, he fell down. And on his left shoulder, my brothers and sisters. You know, he was seriously wounded. You know, badly. He cannot move his hands. He's frozen. He, uh, they rushed him to the doctors. And doctors said, your uh, hand is frozen completely. And it may take at least a year. In the night, he used to have so much pain to sleep. He cannot turn that side. He cannot lift anything. He cannot move things. Oof. And he's here alone. You know, his family is back in, in Pakistan. My brothers and sisters, he's suffering so much. And some of our team members, they went to help him during this period. Gave him the medication. One day, he went to the doctor. Doctor said, you have to do the physiotherapy. Each day, 125 dirhams. He said, I don't have that money. He brought some medication from them and said, my brothers and sisters, in this most difficult period, that's the time, my brothers and sisters, he came to this healing session last month. And what happened? You know, God saw his dedication. God saw his love. He gets up in the morning, 3 o'clock early morning, and starts praying to the Lord. My brothers and sisters, God did a marvelous miracle. 
healed him completely for the glory of God. Brother, can you stand, lift your both hands and show, see the my brothers and sisters. Doctor said one year he cannot lift the hand, see. Brother is ready to box also now. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so strong his hand became. Praise the Lord. You see, that's the power of Jesus. That happened in this healing session, my brothers and sisters. You know, and he has been a so wonderful witness, praying. You know, he told me another beautiful testimony. You know, one day, he had one uh, uh, European couple, you know, from English couple, you know. He, uh, they were in a very good post in a, some school or something. Wife was working for the school and uh, he was in a manager's grade, in a high position person. You know, he did not have a place to stay. It's a difficult time for him. That time, someone spoke to this uh, wife of that gentleman, Anna, and said he doesn't have a place to stay. Can you help? Then this gentleman called him and said, okay, Francis, okay, you can uh, stay in this because we have a big place, but we cannot give you a lot of one full room, but you can find a place here. So in the gallery, he's to sleep. And he's to pray at 3 o'clock in the morning. He will get up and start praying. My brothers and sisters, that particular English family, not prayerful family, only family, going for parties, drinking, no prayers. Usually most of these wives are into, very few of them you find are very prayerful families. You know, my brothers and sisters, what happened? As he was praying, as he was praying, as he was praying, this family, they saw the divine mercy picture in his room. And uh, they asked him. And he brought divine mercy picture, gave it to them. Every room divine mercy picture came. This family started reading the word of God. Every room the scripture came on the walls. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, and that gentleman, he got a kind of cancer. The doctor said, your leg to be, should be amputated. You know, my brother, this is a, you know, terrible news for that family. But Francis, you know, along with one of a Niranjali. Niranjali is here anywhere? Yeah, no. Okay. Along with that, another person of our team members, you know, of our prayer group. You know, both of them started interceding with the chaplets and chaplets of divine mercy and praying for the healing of this gentleman. My brothers and sisters, what happened? Doctor canceled. The doctor said, there is no more amputation for you and you will be healed. Today that, today, that gentleman is walking for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, it all happened because Francis was praying with his heart. You know, with the love for that gentleman. You know, my brothers and sisters, trusting now today that big family, pagan, literally pagan family, has become a prayer for family. Divine mercy family. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As I was still my five minutes are there, I will share one more testimony of yours. Okay. So my brother, sister, one day brother Francis, you know what happened to him? He basically was staying one home. You know, there's a small place that was given to him, as seven quarters. You know, he was staying there and he had put a beautiful pictures of divine mercy which he had taken from us. And he used to pray to that divine mercy. And this particular family who are there, for some time, they had to leave the country. And so Francis also had to move out of the place. But somehow, Francis knew whoever comes to that home will call him back. He put a divine mercy, that picture, he cleared everything, but he did not remove that beautiful picture of divine mercy from his room. Praise the Lord. And what happened? When the new people came, English people, you know, from England, they came, they started looking, who is this person put the Jesus picture in this room? We want to know. So they started inquiring everywhere. What happened is that they came to know from the next watchman of the building, he was friendly with the Francis. He told, I know the person, his name is Francis, a Christian. And uh, so can you call him, my brothers and sisters? And uh, can you believe this family called him? They said, we saw Jesus' picture in that particular room. So you can come and stay in the same room 
and they gave accommodation free of cost for Francis. Shall we give a big hand to the Lord? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You see, my brothers and sisters, what all marvelous things God does for us. So that is why, my brothers and sisters, today, our wonderful God is here. We need to worship Him. We need to praise Him. We need to thank Him. We need to glorify Him, my brothers and sisters. You know, you should not neglect your prayer life. So many people neglect their prayer life, my brothers and sisters. Because the Word of God says, those who get up in the morning and seek God shall find God. Praise the Lord. You want to find God? Then, when you have to get up? 8 o'clock? 11 o'clock? <laughs> my brothers and sisters, if you are sleeping, some of them putting their head down. I know when they are getting up. <laughs> you see, my brothers and sisters, you know you have to get up early in the morning. If you want to find God, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, you know you have to be dedicated for the kingdom of God. And you have to read the word of God every single day, my brothers and sisters. Don't neglect this word. Because this word will take you one day into the eternal kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what David said very clearly, my brothers and sisters. What did he say? Psalm 119, verse 11. I have treasured your word in my heart, Lord, so that I will not sin against you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, when you treasure the word of God, my brothers and sisters, that will stop you from sinning. You know, that's why you have to, you know, put this word into action. Not, it should not be, you know, some say Catholics' Bibles are very new. Is your Bible is very new? Then I will tell you something. <laughs> okay. You see, my brothers and sisters, your Bible should be well used. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, you should not be looking new. Okay. Make sure, you know, that your Bible is well used. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, that's why I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, you know, you should not have a dust on your Bibles. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, my brother, one small girl, you know, in a school, one brother, put a preacher had gone there to a house in a particular, in a school. And he was, uh, he had to give some word of God to the small children. Then he asked one of the baby, baby, tell me, what is there in the Bible? Okay. She said, oh, sir, in the Bible, my mama is handkerchief. My mom is bobbins. My mom is... Oh, oh, she gave a big list of the things. What is there inside the Bible? <laughs> you understand, my brothers and sisters? That should not happen in your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible should be well used, my brothers and sisters. It is not to keep inside your cupboards or almeras, But it is to be read, studied, meditate upon and applied in your life. Praise the Lord.